Welcome to the next lecture of Structured Text Programming in RS Logics and Studio 5000, in which we're going to be talking about the different logical operators as well as mathematical expressions which we can use to program our logic in structured text. So the first thing that we're going to do is go through the basic logic operators and we're going to start with the OR. As you can see, I already have a program set up which is called Logical Ops or logical operators and so let's go into the edit mode like we've learned a couple of lectures ago and we're going to start by implementing the most basic uh, or operator so before we get started with today's video we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the solus plc youtube channel and this includes industrial automation plc programming as well as hmi development and if you enjoy this type of content we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel in this case, we're going to use this boolean, so local bool zero is going to be assigned to be a, an evaluation of two bits. So local bool one or local bool two. So this is the simplest implementation of or I'm just going to put a comment here so or operator. And let's compile the program and take a look at the watch tab. So once again, this is at the bottom right here, I'm going to click watch. And as you can see, I'm going, so first of all, I'm going to reset all of the tags back to zero. Let's see here. So everything is back to zero. We have three different tags involved in this expression. And the OR operator, as some of you may know, who come with a background of, in different programming languages, will set this local bool zero to one whenever either one of these tags is set to one. So it's either one is going to be a one. So let's test that out right here. I'm going to type in a one in our local bowl two, and I'm going to click away. I'm going to press enter. And you'll notice that local bool zero immediately turns to one. If I set my local bool one to one, it stays one. And if I set this one back to zero, zero, and then press enter, it'll still stay at one. And finally, when I set both of them to zero, the local bool zero goes back to zero. So very simple. This is an OR instruction. Another thing that I do want to point out is if we go back to ladder logic, this expression would essentially be a design of a branched circuit. So what I mean by that is we can achieve the exact same result of what we just programmed by using two of these XIC instructions followed by an OTE at the end. So of course the OTE would be our local bool zero and both of these would be local bool one and two. And this is essentially an OR branch. So whether you're, whether the top or the bottom XIC evaluates to high, this OTE is gonna be set to high. Let's go back to our, we're just going to continue programming here. So I'm going to actually remove this because it's going to give us an error. Let's go back here. And then the next thing we're going to look at is the end operator so very simple once again so let's see here an operator and i'm just going to copy this entire line and paste it down below and i'm going to type in and and of course just to not confuse ourselves i'm going to type in instead of this zero this is going to be three and then we should be able to put a four and a five let's see if we can compile this press yes. Let's go back to the watch tab and the end operator as some of you like I mentioned may already know whenever both of these are set to high only then will the local bool 3 be set to high. So let's test that out. So let's put a 1 in this 4. As you can see nothing happens in this 3. Let's put a 1 in here. I'm just going to actually let me expand this a little bit. Let's put a 1 in this five, as soon as I press enter, you'll notice that the local bool three evaluated to one as well. So that's how the end operator works. Both of these need to be set to a one in order for local bool three be equivalent to one. Next, we have the not operator. So the not operator is very simple. It just flips the value of the bit. So what I'm going to do is go back into edit mode and I'm going to create this not operator instructions so local bool let's use six is going to be set to this local bool seven 
and let's see here let's compile the logic and essentially local bool 6 is going to be equivalent to the opposite of what the local bool 7 bit is being set to let's go back to our watch tab and see that in action so right now it's hmm it's interesting i did not include the not that is my mistake not so these mistakes do happen, make sure to always double check your logic. So I'm going to recompile with the not instruction. So essentially what I've done previously is just set it equivalent to whatever that local bool 7 was. I'm going to go back into the watch and as, as soon as I set this back to zero, you'll notice that this bit is going to flip. Press one back once again and this goes back to zero. And so this instruction is equivalent to what you would get on an XIO branch. So if I scroll this down a little bit, the not instruction would be equivalent to this XIO and an OT instruction and of course matched or mapped to the tags 0 and 1 accordingly. So although these operators may seem simple, they are the backbone of what you would implement in ladder logic when you're creating rungs and different structures that are going to execute your logics. So let's look at an example that we've seen many, many times before. And what I'm referring to is a simple motor starter in which you have a start, a stop, and a running bits. So essentially three different bits and you have a structure as you can see on your screen now. And let's think about the logic that we're going to implement. So first you have this dual branch, like I've mentioned, this is going to be an or condition because you're either allowing the motor to start when the start button is pressed or the motor is already running. And then you're evaluating an and condition through a stop push button in the case that in the sense that the stop button must not be pressed in order for the motor to start running. And this is implemented very simply in, in uh, structured text. So let's edit this instruction and write that operation right now. So motor starter. And this is going to be, let's just create new bits. So this is running, is going to be set. So we're going to use the non-retentive kind. And this is going to be when it is running, or start PB, so start push button. And we're going to put this in parentheses because essentially the order in which you create these tags matters. So we do want to create those parentheses. And remember that the stop push button has an XIO sign on it. So we have to use the not on the stop push button in order to allow the logic to execute properly and essentially create the XIO condition. Now we're going to test this logic, but before we can do that, we need to create these new tags. Let's just quickly do that. So Boolean create. That's already done. Start push button. Let's just cross reference, make sure that we're not using them anywhere else. That's perfectly fine. Let's compile everything and see if we can go through a few conditions. What is the problem? Let's see here. Okay, it looks like everything is as we expect. Let's go back into our watch window. I'm just going to scroll this up a little bit and we'll notice that the motor is currently not running. So let's see if, so first of all, our stop push button is not pressed. So if we push the start, push, the start push button by putting in a one, you'll notice that the motor is definitely running. Let's depress the start push button by setting it to zero. You'll notice that the motor is still running. Let's press the stop push button by writing a one. You'll notice that the motor immediately stopped. And then let's finally test this by writing a one to the start push button. And you notice, you'll notice immediately that the motor is still not running because we have the stop button pushed in. As soon as we put the zero into stop push button, the motor starts running. And of course we can continue examining the sequence in the same order if we desire to do so. Now that's the simplest example that we can create. What's going to be a little bit more important is to look at examples that are going to be a little bit more challenging. So what I've created here, and this is something that I encourage you to try on your own. And I'll give you a, hint, a few hints. Let's just walk through this. Like I've said before, a sequence of different tags is going to be using an end instruction. So you have this Boolean 1 and Boolean 2 and, and knotted Boolean 3 because it's an XIO. And then all of this is used on an OR instruction. So this is going to be OR Boolean 4 
or not boolean 6 and boolean 5 and i will be posting the solution to this exercise on the website but this is definitely good practice because you will have to create these structures in your uh, structured text implementations and your expressions the last thing i wanted to mention mention really quickly is that in a structured text you do not have mathematical operations and essentially instructions like we've seen in ladder logic so what i'm referring to is essentially the greater than the grts the les the le lim or the limit instructions but instead you have to evaluate your booleans through expressions like you are uh, essentially comparing the compare instruction that we've seen a couple of times before so what you need to write is local bool for example 8 is going to be set when a certain condition is met so this this condition could be 100 is less than local dint for example 0 and this expression would evaluate to true so I'm just going to create this new local dint and this is going to be 20 of them so whenever this 100 is less than whatever this value is it's going to evaluate to true and let's look at that really quickly here so i'm just going to set a few values and we can see whenever this changes to a boolean one let's go back into the watch tab and you'll notice that now we should have the local dent right here so now local dent is zero and local bool six uh, so that's the not so local bool 8 is still a 0 so what do we need to do in order to get this uh, value to evaluate to true is of course set this local dent 0 greater to uh, 100 so let's set this for example to 56 if we set it to 99 if we set it to 100 nothing changes as soon as we set it to 101 however Let's set 101 and then press enter. You'll notice that local bool 8 immediately evaluated to 1. Similarly, if we go below uh, below 100, it's going to go back to 0. So essentially, this expression is being used to evaluate whether this expression is true or not. And it's setting this bit to either 0 or 1. We can edit this and, of course, make it as complex as we'd like. So I can do 100 plus, for example, local dint uh, local dint one and then I can say here I don't know it's minus minus 55 for minus 44 and I can compile this and I can make it like I said as complex as I would like as long as it evaluates to a boolean at the end of the expression then I can write it in here now the other thing to notice is that something like a limit instruction will require two of these expressions because you cannot have essentially a greater and then a less than sign on the other side you may only have one comparator in your expression so you'll have to create two separate instructions and i'll post a little bit more details on the website as expected thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye